Good morning. Look who's back. Good morning. Here we are in the desert together now. So we're not alone in the wilderness. Yes, and I have empty arms. Yeah, no more baby. <laughs> but we have the puppies. We have the puppies, yes. We're babysitting, puppy sitting. <laughs> um, so we're in Genesis chapter 29, and I thought it fit uh, for this very strange section uh, for us to sing, God moves in a mysterious way. We sang it a year ago, so oh no, that's not right. We sang it a month ago. That was this. That was this yeah. last January. Oh well, it number seven hundred sixty-five was it? It was appropriate, it was appropriate then. Appropriate now. Yeah. <clears throat> God moves in a mysterious way. His wonders to perform. He plants his footsteps in the sea and rides upon the storm. It judge not the Lord by feeble sense, but, but trust, trust him for his grace. Behind the frowning providence, faith sees a smiling face. His purposes will ripen fast, unfolding every hour. The bud may have a bitter taste, but sweet will be the flower. Blind unbelief is sure to err and scan his work in vain. God is his own interpreter, and he will make it plain. You fearful saints, fresh courage take, the clouds you so much dread. Are big with mercy and will break in blessings on your head. That's my favorite line. <laughs> I, I kept struggling with laughter because that, that's a great hymn, and there's a lot of good things to think about in those verses. But <laughs> you kept looking at me, and I'd say, I'm, I'm making a mistake. I'm making a mistake. No. I'm doing something wrong. Oh, I missed those words. It was <laughs> because you're here, uh, I'm just having having more aware. He's having performance anxiety. <laughs> it's yeah. called performance anxiety. <laughs> Here's the scripture. <laughs> there we go. Jacob marries Leah and Rachel. Then Jacob went on his journey and came to the land of the people of the east. As he looked, he saw a well in the field, and behold, three flocks of sheep lying beside it, for out of that well the flocks were watered. The stone on the well's mouth was large, and when all the flocks were gathered there, the shepherds would roll the stone from the mouth of the well and water the sheep, and put the stone back in its place over the mouth of the well. Jacob said to them, My brothers, where do you come from? They said, We are from Haran. He said to them, Do you know Laban, the son of Nahor? They said, We know him. He said to them, Is it well with him? They said, It is well. And see, Rachel his daughter is coming with the sheep. He said, Behold, it is still high day. It is not time for the livestock to be gathered together. Water the sheep and go, pasture them. But, they said, We cannot until all the flocks are gathered together and the stone is rolled from the mouth of the well. Then we water the sheep. While he was still speaking with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she was a shepherdess. Now, as soon as Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, 
Jacob came near and rolled a stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. Then Jacob kissed Rachel and wept aloud. And Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's kinsman and that he was Rebekah's son. And she ran and told her father. As soon as Laban heard the news about Jacob, his sister's son, he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his house. Jacob told Laban all these things, and Laban said to him, Surely you are my bone and my flesh. And he stayed with him a month. Then Laban said to Jacob, Because you are my kinsman, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what shall your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the older was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were weak, but Rachel was beautiful in form and appearance. Jacob loved Rachel, and he said, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, It is better that I give her to you than that I should give her to any other man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife that I may go into her, for my time is completed. So Laban gathered together all the people of the place and made a feast. But in the evening, he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob, and he went into her. Laban gave his female servant Zilpah to his daughter Leah to be her servant. And in the morning, behold, it was Leah. And Jacob said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? Did I not serve you? with you for Rachel? Why then have you deceived me? Laban said, It is not so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Complete the week of this one, and we will give you the other also in return for serving me another seven years. Jacob did so and completed her week. Then Laban gave him his daughter Rachel to be his wife. Laban gave his female servant Bilhah to his daughter Rachel to be her servant. So Jacob went in to Rachel also, and he loved Rachel more than Leah, and served Laban for another seven years. So this is a strange story and, uh, and a disturbing one. I, don't, I think it would have been disturbing at the time, I mean, in their culture, also, well, that's, that's there's something not right with that, right? Mm -hmm. And the and the, um, I mean, it's not unusual for people to be cruel or or to take advantage of others, to to value life little, um, to trade life. Uh, in fact, it's not unusual today, is it? Um, the way that people uh, treat other people in pornography, for instance to use, or, or in entertainment in many ways, to use other people for their personal benefit, or comfort, or pleasure, or entertainment. Um, we often take people rather lightly. So, so it's not so surprising, or shouldn't be so surprising to us, except that it's two sisters who are given to the same man as wives. Um, certainly that's an unusual thing in our culture today. Um, and it was not God's will then. Almost nothing that Jacob does seems to be God's will, except to go and find a wife from among his own people. But it didn't have to be uh, from Laban's family. And uh, it just should be a faith, it should be a faithful wife. He should find a faithful wife to raise faithful children, to raise children in the faith. Am I repeating myself? That's the word that's most important. Most important to God. Most, it ought to be most important to us. Not Rachel's beauty. Not, uh, not the seven years that he worked or the, the, the other seven years that he worked. Not getting his way. But, but faithfulness. Trust in God. 
and, and for God to guide things. It, uh, the hymn said God moves in a mysterious way. He certainly does. Uh, had, had Laban been honest and Jacob married Rachel, and only Rachel, and then gone on his way as his father married Rebecca and only Rebecca and went on his way, then, then the Savior would have come through Rachel. But, but no, sin breaks in and there's deception. The deceiver, Jacob, is deceived by Laban. And, and uh, now he ends up with two wives and, and a bitter, divided family instead of a harmonious one because, because it says he hated uh, Leah. Not, not literally, not hated in the sense in which you and I might think of it, but, but as a, um, in the sense of pushing her away. Uh, that that one is kind of excluded and the other is welcomed in. Um, that's often how that word is used in Scripture. And, and of course, hatred for God or God's hatred for something means it's separated from him. So, so that is a literal meaning to that. But uh, his family will be under all this stress because then God has compassion on Leah. She's the victim in this. And so God blesses her with children, which are a, a, a mark of pride for their father and for any father in that culture particularly. To have sons. They have sons. And, and the line of the Savior comes through Leah. And then, and then he has compassion on, on Rachel. And she has a couple of children. But they, had, they enter this competition. Well, that's, that's not for today. Um, the wondering. family, the family, uh, is a soap opera as much of scripture is and as much of our own lives really is. Our lives are a soap opera. Uh, as we look around us, the, the entertainment, the events, the, this happened to that person and this person is mad at that person and this is going on all kinds of sin. That's what makes it a soap opera. All kinds of sin. But God moves in a mysterious way his wonders to perform. Our, our life takes twists and turns. God can work through those things that you didn't think turned out so well. Oh, it was a choice. I should have made a different choice. Or whatever. But with the choice that you made, still God can work. A different thing, but the Lord teaches different lessons uh, every time we... We take another twist or another turn. So who knows where today will go? Who knows what tomorrow will bring? Uh, we're finding a lot of changes happening uh, rather rapidly uh, in our own life. And yet, uh, we trust God is guiding. And um, sometimes we worry. But in the end, he always, he's always blessed us and always come through. And I know he will for you today also. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, the, the unexpected phone call, the sudden knock on the door, the, the, uh, the accident, the diagnosis, uh, the, the change in a relationship, the new friendship or the, or the loss of an old one. So many changes that can happen so suddenly in our life. Lord, help us to see your hand, not always in causing all these things. These things are often our own choices that we make. But your hand in using them, blessing them, granting through these things, whatever they might be, opportunity for us to grow in faith. The most important thing to you, not that we have this or that car or this or that house or this or that uh, relationship, but rather that in all these things, as we stumble through our wilderness, you will draw us more and more closely to yourself. Let that be the outcome of everything we do, everything you do in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. You have a great day. Amen.